That footage was from leaving the campsite that I stayed at in Reno, Nevada a few days ago. I'm not there anymore though. That's the ocean. <laughs> The water's like 50 something degrees, but it doesn't really seem to bother me as much when the air is 75 and sunny like it is today. It's been a beautiful day. video I want to discuss a little bit about why I decided to go with such a small van. This is a question that I've been getting pretty frequently since I purchased the Envy back in February and it's a good question. It's definitely a reasonable question and there are a lot of reasons why I decided to go with the Envy 200 over a much larger van like a Promaster or a Sprinter for example or possibly even an older large van like an E350 or a Chevy G20 or a Chevy Express or something along those lines and also there's quite a few reasons why I chose the NV200 over similar size vans like a minivan for example or uh, even like the Promaster City or the Transit Connect and I'm gonna get into those reasons in this video. So I think the first reason for choosing a small van versus something larger was gas mileage. I wanted to be able to maintain similar gas mileage to what I was getting in the Element, if not maybe even improve it a little bit, and that's exactly what I've been able to do with the NV200, even with the pop top on and the added weight for the pop top and the less aerodynamics, I guess you could say, that is also caused by the pop top. I'm still getting about 26, 27 miles to the gallon on a good tank, and that's quite a bit better than I ever got with the Element on an entire tank of gas and much better than what I would have got had I decided to go with a large van like a Promaster or even something like an older uh, you know, E350 or something along those lines. Those things don't really get the best gas mileage. So that was important to me. Those of you that have been following along for a while know that I definitely do quite a bit of miles every once in a while. I'll go on some pretty long trips from time to time and I wanted to be able to maintain some pretty good gas mileage. You know, those seven, eight miles to the gallon, that makes a huge difference over a 2,000 mile road trip. So that was something that I was definitely thinking about. I think the next reason for choosing a small van like this has to do with just the fact that it's really small. I really like being able to drive it around in really congested areas where there is a lot of traffic and a lot of pedestrians and things like that, and it's just a lot easier to do so. I think I actually came to this realization when I was in New York City. I spent a night stealth camping in Manhattan in the Element back in the fall of last year, and I remember saying it in that video that I thought, you know, I really kind of valued the fact that the element was compact and that I could easily, you know, drive it around and dodge things if I needed to and all that. People popping out at you, cars cutting you off and stuff like that. And I just, I didn't want to have to go with something bigger. I feel like it would be a lot harder to drive a high top sprinter around downtown San Francisco, for example. I think that it would be a lot harder and it would definitely be harder to park it. It'd be a lot more difficult to park it somewhere in parallel park, holding up traffic with lanes of traffic, people beeping at you and stuff like that. It's just a lot easier to have something small. I guess I just like spending time in cities and I also equally like spending time on BLM land and in national forests almost as an escape to the craziness that is the city life but I do tend to gravitate back towards densely populated areas. I mean, I've been working in San Francisco and living out of San Francisco for the most part here, and I spent a lot of time in San Diego, New York City. I mean, these places have a lot of people, and having a smaller van just makes life in those situations a lot easier. Stealth camping is a lot easier. It's just It just works out a lot better for me. And the fact that this van fits into a compact parking spot anywhere without any issues. Literally the smallest parking spots that you can find in really busy parking lots and things like that, there are no problems. It fits right in there. That is something that I also really value. I like the fact that I can fit it in wherever and I also just kind of like the fact that I can that I can fit my entire life into a compact parking spot. I really value minimalism. I know that I've mentioned that a lot and just the fact that I can have all of my things with me and fit them into a really small space is something that I'm kind of proud of. And that kind of brings me to my next point. Just the idea of minimalism and just having a small footprint and being able to fit my entire life into a small little house like this. It's something that really works out for me and you know having a small van is 
kind of a good way to force myself to not have a lot of stuff and it's not really been a problem so far you know coming from the element I had empty storage space underneath the bed of the element and now in here it's a little bit bigger and it's noticeable that I just have a bunch of empty storage space like underneath the bed along the side here there is literally nothing under there and there's spots underneath my clothes as well that just don't have anything in them so I either got to get more stuff or just get used to having a lot of empty storage space but it's it's just something that kind of helps to improve my life and, and makes things better for me I know I've like I said before I've talked quite a bit about minimalism in past videos and everything, but that's another reason why I chose to go small. My next reason is the overall price of the van. NV200s are very competitively priced, and I knew that I wanted to buy a van that was relatively new because I also knew that I was gonna be spending a lot of money on the conversion and putting money into it between the pop top and then everything else that I did myself in here and all the materials, it was relatively expensive and I just, I wanted to have something that was newer that I would feel more confident about over the long term. And, and I ended up buying a brand new van. This this was new when I bought it. It was, well, it was a year old, but it, it, it was new technically. It had like a couple hundred miles on it and it had just been one of the last of the 2018s, I guess you could say. But you know, that, there was, that, was, that was a big reason for it. And it's just a lot cheaper to buy a new NV200 than it is to buy a new or even almost new ProMaster with a high top on it. And obviously adding the pop top kind of almost equalizes that cost. I know a lot of you guys are going to mention that. The pop top generally runs from like eight to $9,000. That's kind of the general price for it from GTRV. I ended up spending a little bit less because I'm also working for GTRV. I'm doing promotional content for them. I'm going to be shooting like almost like a, com like a commercial type video for them in the next couple of weeks here and things like that. So I obviously paid a little bit less for it because I'm also working for them but you know the average person when you add that 8,000 to you know a $19,000 NV200 in that area you're suddenly back in that similar that similar range but even so like regardless of the fact that it makes it that similar range for me I value having a smaller van over having a larger van for all the reasons that I that I just mentioned in this video here. And I guess that brings me to the last reason for why I chose such a small van, and that's because I, I really wanted to have a pop top. I know that I talked about that in the past, and I just like the idea of having a pop top. I like that it has a lower profile so that when I am stealth camping, it's a lot harder to notice, but at the same time, it also allows for a huge amount of flexibility in the living space. I can create this a massive amount of standing room to be able to walk around and things like that and then it also produces the upper bunk as well so say if one of my friends joins me on the road for a week or two if they want to take a trip or whatever like that's something that could totally happen and that's why I, I wanted to go with it and I guess that's uh I guess that's all of my reasons for choosing such a small van I am really hungry and it's also like like 90 degrees in here right now. I don't know if you can tell I'm like sweating in here, but I didn't want to open the windows because there's all these cars driving by, so audio. But I'm gonna make some dinner right now. Dinner's pretty simple tonight. I just had some leftover cauliflower tikka masala from the other day. I made it a second time and turned out better this time. And you know, it's it's pretty rare that I actually want to eat the food that I cooked for myself. That's kind of been the story, but I think I'm getting better at cooking because I really actually want to eat this. Like I would prefer to eat this over anything else right now. And maybe it's just because I'm starving from surfing all day, but it turned out pretty well. Like I I'm, I'm excited about this. By the way, I guess I kind of use the Instant Pot as like a microwave in these situations. I'll just take my leftovers and dump them in there and then heat them up, putting it on pressure mode, usually high pressure for a few minutes, maybe like four or five minutes. It doesn't quite come to pressure all the way, but I can usually tell that it's hot enough to eat because it starts to sizzle in there. You can kind of hear it a little bit and then I'll just open it up and it's ready to go. I think I left it on for too long. It's a little bit too hot, but that's gotta be more efficient than using a microwave.
reasons why I decided to go with the NV200 over other similar compact cargo vans like the Promaster City or the Ford Transit Connect, there's really only a couple of reasons for it. The main one being that I really didn't have another choice. I was going to put a pop top on it, that was always in the plan, and I was going to work with GTRV. I ended up figuring that out early on. So. They only do the NV200 of those three. They do a lot of vans. They do the Mercedes Metris, a bunch of other things as well. They can work on a whole bunch of vans and they do a lot of really awesome conversions, but they don't do the Transit Connect or the Promaster City, at least not at this point. So I kind of had to pick the NV200. That was, that was really my only option there. And I also really liked Nissan's warranty. Nissan has a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty on these vans. It doesn't. The other companies don't have that. They're the standard three-year, 36,000-mile, that kind of thing. So I knew that I was going to be financing it for something that I'm going to pay off over time. I'd like to. I like to have the peace of mind that it's under warranty when things start to go bad. And notice I said when things start to go bad. I realize that Nissans are not what they used to be. I get it. I know that the company has gone downhill a little bit. I've seen the Scotty Kilmer video. And Basically, putting a French car company in the mix with a Japanese car company. French cars have always been... I actually worked for CarMax for a while, and I sold Nissans. I sold all kinds of different cars when I was working for them for, for quite some time. And I realized that the Nissans were not the best vehicles. They're, they didn't really compare to the Hondas and the Toyotas. I get it. But at the same time, I don't know if they're any worse than the Fords or the Fiats, which were the other two options, right? Like the Promaster City is just a Fiat, right? So it's it's like, what's better? You know, you're kind of just picking the lesser of the three evils and I'm just hoping that I can take care of this van over the next so many years and just do the best that I can to keep it in the best shape that I can. And hopefully, uh, hopefully it works out long term. You know, like I said, though, I re realistically didn't have much of an option between the three. I knew that I wanted the pop top. That was kind of a big selling point I, for getting a small van like this to be able to have that pop top was kind of a big part of it. And it all worked out at least so far. But obviously, I'm going to keep you guys posted over the years as things change and, and keep you guys updated as I uh, continue on this adventure. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all in the next one.